Good morning and welcome to St Stephen's. I'm Margaret, one of the wardens. Whether you're a regular or this is your first time with us, I'm really pleased you could join us. Let us just pause for a moment to clear any distractions and recognise that we're in the presence of the Lord. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're now going to have our first hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. And now we come to our time of confession, knowing that we're weak, that we're imperfect, but our Heavenly Father loves us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all of our sins. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past 
and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we share the collect for today. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, Give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And today's Gospel reading is taken from Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall under their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I must confess, while I miss us meeting together in church, I do like being curled up in a comfy armchair to listen to the reflection in our stream service. Today's gospel reading is rather uncomfortable though. And if we're not uncomfortable, we're probably missing the point. To put things in context, John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin, has been killed. Jesus has tried to find solitude, to rest, reflect and pray, but instead he's ended up teaching, healing and then feeding over 5,000 people. Afterwards, he spent the night praying on a mountain. Then he's returned to the disciples, walking on water with Peter. Then more healing and teaching about inner purity. Because of his divinity and resurrection, we often think of Jesus as invincible, but as a man, he has frailties just like us. I imagine Jesus is rather drained at this point and just wants some space as he withdraws to Tyre and Phoenicia, about 30 miles away on the Mediterranean Sea, north of Israel. Now Tyre is a Gentile or non-Jewish area so there should be less pressure for Jesus to perform while he prepares for the last part of his ministry. But no sooner has Jesus arrived than a Canaanite woman comes to him crying, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Now it's worth noting that this story is also recorded in Mark 7 verses 24 to 30, though Mark refers to her as a Syrophoenician. Remember that Matthew was writing for a Jewish audience. Canaanites were pagan and bitter enemies of the Jews, so this would have extra meaning for the Jews. Now Jesus and the disciples are in a strange place, outside of their comfort zone, and probably tired from the journey even before the woman approaches. This woman must be beside herself with worry for her daughter, as she's breaking all the social rules to approach Jesus. She's a Gentile, he's a Jew, and also she's directly addressing a man without first having been spoken to. We find verse 23 uncomfortable reading. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away for she keeps crying out after us. How can 
can Jesus, who we see full of love and healing for others, be so indifferent to a woman in such genuine distress? We could try to look for explanations to put our minds at rest, but we just don't know. Even worse, the disciples are actively trying to get rid of her. She's not one of them, so they have no time for her and assume that Jesus doesn't either. We're disturbed at their lack of compassion and exclusive position. At first glance, Jesus' reply of, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, doesn't seem to help the situation either. But if we look at the text more carefully, Jesus isn't rejecting the woman. He's cleverly starting a dialogue with her. We know that God's love is for all. Jesus isn't contradicting this. If you remember God's covenant in, with Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 3, the Jews are the first invited to accept Jesus as the Messiah. God wants them to tell the news of salvation to the rest of the world. Undeterred, the woman falls to her knees and again begs for help. Jesus' reply of, it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs, seems humiliating. Dog was a term Jews used for Gentiles, as the Jews considered them mo no more likely than dogs to receive God's blessing. Again, we're deeply uncomfortable. Where is the loving, compassionate Jesus we know? Comparing this with Mark's account is more helpful though, as he states, First, let the children eat all they want. I don't think Jesus is trying to reject the woman and the term dog is more likely used as a household pet rather than as a scavenger. Jesus is just stating his primary mission to the Jews while drawing those present into learning something important. Again, the woman persists. Instead of arguing, she uses the same imagery as Jesus. Yes, it is, Lord. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. She recognises that Jesus is her master and is happy to be considered a dog, an inconvenience, as long as she can receive God's blessing for her daughter. She is saying, surely there's enough to go round for everybody. It's no coincidence in this story in Matthew that it's sandwiched between the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the 4,000. The lesson is clear. The overwhelming abundance of God's grace and provision is for everybody. There's more than enough to go around, irrespective of race, gender, or any other issue. Jesus confirms this when he says to the woman, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Great faith. Jesus only described two people as having great faith. This woman and the Roman centurion in Luke 7 verse 9. This woman doesn't come to faith in the sense that she wants to become a follower of Jesus or turn her back on a Gentile heritage to take up Jewish ways. But she does have great faith. She sees her daughter is in real pain and distress and she shares in some of that suffering. She knows that she's powerless to heal her daughter, but she completely trusts Jesus to do so. She calls him Lord and son of David, acknowledging that he is Lord over all and trusts in his power so much that her daughter does not need to be present. She's honest in acknowledging her unworthiness. She's persistent and shows humility. This reading gives us quite a few things to consider. One, the disciples are quick to dismiss the woman because she is different. Do we exclude people anywhere in our lives because of difference? And this isn't always blatant racism or homophobia. It may be as simple as always sitting in the same friendship group for coffee and not welcoming in the newcomer. Two, when we set out to do God's work, do we become blind to those who need our help? And who we could walk alongside? Do we shrug off people that we see as an inconvenience or do we see in them an opportunity to share God's love? Do we even offer the breadcrumbs? 
Do we share our experiences of church with friends and family? Do we tell them what Jesus means to us? And do we share our prayers and the answering of those prayers with others? Three, Jesus doesn't make the woman following him a condition of healing. Jesus meets the woman where she is at. If we offer help or we welcome people into our groups, do we attach conditions? Do we expect them to become more like us or do we start where they're at and accept them for who they are? Four, we all go through difficult times, a family illness, a problem at work, mental health. It feels like we're barely hanging on, but we're never alone. We can take our problems to Jesus and we know that he will listen and he'll respond with compassion. Silence should not be seen as indifference. We must trust that all prayer is answered in the right way, at the right time, even if we don't understand it. And finally, the woman gratefully accepts the crumbs and her daughter is healed. If we have such faith, honesty, persistence and humility, how much more God offers us as he invites us to the feast. Amen. And now let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we now come to our intercessions. Heavenly Father, it fills us with joy that we can call you Father knowing that you love us and want the best for us. We come humbly to you now, fully trusting that you will hear us and answer our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, as you are gracious to us, make us sensitive to the needs of others. Help us to be inclusive rather than exclusive and respond with love and compassion wherever we can, meeting people where they are at without making them become more like us. We remember before you all who are judged because of colour, race or creed, and we ask your blessing on refugees, the poor, nations that are in debt and hungry and homeless people. We pray for all who work for relief organisations and the emergency services for all who give their lives in care and service of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for the people affected by the Lebanon explosion. We remember the lives lost, grieving families, the injured, the traumatised, the homeless and the jobless in a country already struggling with poverty and pandemic. May they know your healing, your peace and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all those who are sick in mind, body or spirit and ask for healing. We pray for those struggling to put food on the table or pay the rent, those feeling isolated and those simply overwhelmed by the current situation. We also pray for those in mourning, those mourning the loss of a loved one, especially those who were unable to attend a funeral. We particularly remember the families of Tom Kennelly, Bill Wally and Margaret Gill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father God, may your presence be felt as young people have received A-level results this week and others prepare to receive GCSE results on Thursday. While many will celebrate, 
Others will be anxious and coping with disappointment after an unprecedented academic year. May your Holy Spirit guide them in their next steps and may they know their worth and value is not based on academic achievement, but on your great love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we're going to finish now with a hymn, especially for Kath, and it just fits in, My Lighthouse. Promise you 
May the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow from you, and the strength of God protect and bring you safely through this day. Amen. And let's all end by sharing the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And don't forget those of you that are on Zoom, you can join us for virtual coffee at 11 o'clock. And hopefully we'll see you all next week. God bless.